puts out my arch feet of chaos. This is your king and knight, Vincent Valentine, EX Turk. to Vincent Valentine EX Turk Channel. What is up, YouTube? This is your king of the night, Vincent Valentine EX Turk, with bringing you with another Final Fantasy content. And uh, these are going to be uploaded tomorrow at the most, so I don't over spam. So we're going to be talking about the livestream.net since I had the thumbnail with me. We're going to be talking about. Eris's life, you know, you know, like, you know, live stream conversation with Professor Hojo, you know, if I can find the that's a little, but pretty much this is conversations that happen during the live stream, during other people's perspective, and let's get to the actual thing. Now, the live stream is also part of the Final Fantasy VII compilation, so. This stuff may not be canon. You know, more head canon than regular canon, but pretty much, you know, oh no, that's the shop one. I'm talking about the actually, um, I think it's on the One Way to Smile series, but I vaguely remember from reading, from listening to the audiobook and reading the audiobook that Hojo explained some of the stuff that, you know, some of the, some of the you know some of the stuff and why how it worked the way it did, because well, remember Professor Hojo when he was alive, you know he worked on Genova cell projects such as projects like Sephiroth, you know Zack and Cloud. He's also helped with the Chaos Project, which was Vincent Valentine, you know. So he would know more than anything else. But pretty much, it'd be his perspective on why he did what he did. Hojo wanted to be known as the greatest scientist in the world. Kind of like Verstel's motives in Final Fantasy XV. He wanted the whole world to recognize his genius. So Hojo did any means necessary, you know, to do it. Even if it was to mess with human life and human biology and just morals in general. You know, he urged Professor Shinra to actually fund, fund his projects and, you know, you know, which caused Shinra to be known as the, you know, un, you know, unethical corporation that is what it is, you know, and soon exposed on the news in Dirge of Cerberus. But from what I know, I think, and this could be a fan theory, but I think in the way I interpret it, I think Eris actually had a conversation with Professor Hojo, and it was about why he did half the stuff he did, and what was Shinra's plan all along. Shinra wanted to go to the Promised Land. It wasn't good enough that they rule the world. It wasn't good enough that they have unlimited supply of Mako energy to um, to give the, their cities, the, you know, their cities the best kind of power imaginable. President Shinra knew a little bit as much as Hojo has, and they wanted to go to the Promised Land, because what President Shinra would wanted to do was actually, once he goes to the Promised Land, build another Mako reactor and build another Midgar. A second Midgar on there that will make people have perfect lives. The only reason why President Shinra actually funded Hojo's experiments because they need a military for anyone who dares to oppose them because, well, the whole war between Avalanche and Shinra, you know, happened. Now, Hojo wanted to be known as the great scientist, as pretty much the smartest human being in the world of Final Fantasy VII at any cost, even at the cost of the planet's life. But also the fact is, uh... Professor Hojo was mad and crazy. He was already a crazy person in the beginning. But when he injected Genova cells, that, you know, prior and before the fight, the fight in the game with him where you had to fight him in different forms, 
the cells tried to take over, and this was actually elaborated in Dirge of Cerberus, but the cells, the Genova cells tried to take over Hojo's mind, so it made him even more mad and crazy than he ever was before, hence why he was okay in Dirge of Cerberus when he, he was okay with Omega destroying the planet and leaving the planet to die, because... Well, Hojo is humanity's completely left behind due to um, injecting strange cells without, you know, proper procedures. Because Hojo, he didn't make himself like Sephiroth. He, he, he just tried to inject the cells and see what would happen. You know, Hojo didn't make the proper procedures. Just like he prepared Vincent Valentine's body with the monsters that Vincent has in order to put chaos in there, just like he did with Lucretia making Sephiroth being, you know, purely born of Genova cells and Mako energy. You know, he didn't do any procedure with himself. He didn't try to, he didn't try, he didn't try to make a surge, he didn't even try to surgically do, uh, what, uh, surgically get himself to be prepared for, you know, be prepared for what was to come. So, pretty much, um, pretty much the conversation between Eris, and this is my interpretation, and Hojo is, that Hojo explained why he did half the things he did. Now, the Livestream.net has novels based off characters, per, uh, you know, perspectives and stuff like that, so you get to know more about Final Fantasy VII than you'll ever know, and know why people did what they did, and as well as perspective, such as beliefs, creed, why they did what they did. I mean, there's even a novel dedicated to Sephiroth, which is the man in the black coat. So, I don't, I can't remember which one is this, but I think this is on my way to smile when Hojo was talking to Eris through the live stream. Because Hojo has some of the same powers as Sephiroth a little bit, where he could communicate through the live stream due to the Genova cells that he put himself. So, even after Dirge of Cerberus, Hojo, Professor Hojo is not dead. He is still very much alive, just only through the live stream. You know, and Eris could be in the live stream on the fact that she's a Cetra, you know. And, you know, Cetras could perform stuff like Holy and stuff like that, and also be part of the live stream. Matter of fact, if it wasn't for Eris, you know, Sephiroth could continuously keep coming back because she, in avid children, she was able to purify the live stream, making it impossible for Sephiroth to create new remnants after Kadaj's gang, you know. So, pretty much, she could also communicate with other people that died, such as Zack, you know, Hojo, and anyone who's pretty much dead, even Dine. She could even communicate with Dine, because, well, in Final Fantasy VII, the belief is, when people die, they go into the live stream, they go into the Earth's energy, so... You know, they're now part of the Earth's energy, so... She could talk to Dine, Hojo... Or anybody like that. And pretty much, I think that's how the conversation went away. Is how, I think the conversation was mostly likely Hojo explaining why he did what he did. You know, what made him do it. What made him have this belief. And I, what I like about the Livestream.net's uh, fan, you know, fan novels. Is it puts more backstory and you understand why the characters did what they did. So this is what my fan theory is about how the conversation was and may the crystal be with you.